slides so far. Uh, I'll jump into the slides in a second. This is a uh, this is part of what we're working on, but uh, you know I'll save that for another minute. Let's see. Let's see. This. Fifteen nineteen presentation. Okay, let's now go to presentation mode here. Excellent. Hey, it's time for the talk. All right. A win, is you. You haven't missed Okay, anything. we're going to start. Uh, we're going to kind of start over. We're going to skip a few things that we already talked about a little bit. Uh, so this is Hacking Crime 2.0, a presentation so good you're all going to cry. Or so bad. Uh, you probably have already started a little bit. Uh, yes. Uh, so we are Freeside. Uh, we make stuff. We made this thing. It's a, it's a mirror with LEDs, but it's cooler than it sounds. Uh, and that's basically all we do for the most part. Okay, so how to be a superhero. We talked about this. Fight crime, uh, wear spandex. That's me. Uh, that's the spandex. Where do we leave off? Uh, get stuff like this. Tasers, whips. Don't really use whips on people. It, uh, it is not as good of an idea as it sounds like. Uh, also, also uh, we have learned firsthand, don't uh, light whips on fire and then use them on people uh, because they burn you first. Uh, kinds of crime, we talked about kinds of crime. Now, let's get to the good stuff. So the old way to fight crime. Uh, basically, I said I used to walk around and maybe sometimes see crime and maybe not. But then I found out about Predpol. This is what Predpol looks like. Um, so we've talked about the data that it looks like, or that it looks at, and it's kind of hard to see on the screen here, but Predpol gives you these options to choose a type of crime. Uh, it gives you, uh, in this fuzzy blue box, it checks off, it gives you different uh, time ranges to check. So you can look uh, from like one to seven, 14, 21, and some other kind of number days in the past to see where crime has happened at your particular time in those past few days. Uh, Predpol is, really, really awesome. It works really, really well, uh, and it costs a lot of money. Uh, and it also is really hard to get uh, when you tell them, like, yeah, I'm not a cop. Uh, I just kind of like to go out and fight crime. It's fine. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't like it. Uh, but the good news is, is you can just make it because it's, it's really, really simple. Um, so I used to do, oh, I have to open the crappy map. That is the best slide I've ever seen. Yes. So, you saw what Predpol looked like. I used to make a little something that looked like this. Uh, so basically what I would do here is I would go to the Atlanta Police website uh, and they have one of those the kind of crime maps you see just about anywhere on the internet where it'll put up a bunch of display points and you can click it and find out information. Um, and so what I used to do is spend like several hours a day clicking stuff and copying and pasting it into spreadsheets. Um, it was a lot of time wasted to do this as we found out later. Uh, but so I would copy all this data, copy down where crimes happened, what kind of crime it was, uh, time of day, uh, day of week. Uh, the day of week I actually had to go find myself because that data wasn't available. I had to actually go back through and insert all that manually. Um, so then I would basically take it, put it in through a website called Batch Geo, which Batch Geo takes a bunch of data points, puts them on a map. Uh, and then I would look at areas where there were clusters of crimes within about 500, uh, 500 yards of each other. Uh, not 500 yards, about 500 uh, feet of each other I should say. And I would if I found a cluster like that, I would put a little block around it. So you can see different colored layers here. Uh, the red ones that you see are all crimes that happened in my database uh, during the evening shift of the police, which is between 10 and uh, 3 a.m. Uh, and then all the blue ones are crimes that happened on Saturdays. Uh, and this is, uh, this, this data, if I recall correctly, was from about a year's worth of crime data. Um, and so essentially I would make these two layers, I would layer them across each other, and then uh, anywhere that the two different layers oversected, like right down here for example, or right there, uh, I knew that during those hours of the night, which is usually when I would be on patrol, those are the areas on that day that there was mo a higher chance than usual of crime to occur. 
So if I was walking around the neighborhood, I knew that I needed to plan a route that made me crisscross through those areas as much as possible. What were you filtering for? Uh, violent felonies, misdemeanors? Uh, essentially, I, I didn't really break it down. Uh, so, okay, so APD, the crime data that they release is mostly, um, I hate this term because it, it, it doesn't sound right, but crimes with victims. So things like larcenies, uh, assaults, any kind of violent crimes. Uh, they don't give you data on things like vice crimes, so like drugs or prostitution or anything like that, uh, or like you know petty crimes, things like that. But if 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 at any point there is a uh, police report generated, it will go in. So it's it doesn't really differentiate of if it's you know a misdemeanor or if it's something that ended up being uh, thrown out later. If, you know the person was found that it didn't happen or anything like that. They're not really that picky about what they put in their database. They probably should be sometimes. Uh, because I've noticed that there are a lot of things that show up uh, that we found out later didn't actually happen. Um, but so that was the that was kind of my thing is I just I would just go I would gather all of the data within the neighborhood I patrol. Um, so usually out of a given year, I would have about 600 to 700 lines in my spreadsheet that I would have to parse through. Uh, and I could look at things individually if I wanted to uh, if I wanted to say just look at car break-ins. I could go through and parse out all my vehicle larcenies and just map those up. Um, but I found it, it kind of, it was more useful for me to get just a broader feel of, of the atmosphere at that given time as opposed to where specific kinds of crime were occurring um, because there's not, at that point I didn't have enough data to see if there was an actual, uh, if there were actually trends in specific crimes. Um, so I would just kind of say, okay, show me all crimes so I know like, this area is where you where something is going to happen. I don't know what it is, but something's going to happen here probably. Uh, and it had a pretty good success rate. Um, the downside being that it uh, it wasn't an exact science. I mean, I was going in, I was kind of looking at things, doing everything by hand, estimating a little bit here and there, and so it had a it had about a fifty percent success rate. Um, so then I came here last year, I did a talk, which if you were here last year, you just heard all of it condensed down into like the past 15 minutes. Uh, and so I came to Freaknik, I met up with the folks from Freeside and they said, hey, why are you doing it that way? You're a fucking idiot. Um, why don't you come here and... Uh, we, were, we were slightly more polite than that, just slightly. Slightly. Um, but yeah, so essentially uh, I showed up there, they said, yeah, we can do that, and then uh, in like 10 minutes they had a system that worked uh, completely autonomously and I didn't have to really do any kind of work. Uh, so, no, not in slides, I'm in this thing now. Do you want to show the thing or do you want to go back? No, let's go to the slides. I got this. I got this. I'm going to let you touch things. Uh, not like that. Not now. <laughs> not now. Later. That's later. We are All in the same room. The podium, We're right? in the same room. We have separate beds. We push them together. <laughs> okay. If any of my uh, potential employers are watching this video later, I, I'd like to tell you that that's not true. <laughs> unless, unless you want it to be, then it is. <laughs> So, uh, before I turn it over to Nathan, I'm going to give a, a, a little bit about the new the new mapping system uh, before he explains like the really smart technical stuff that I don't quite understand as well as I should. Uh, so, how we got our data. This was the first point where I was an idiot. Um, so, you know, I was going through, I was manually copying and pasting everything out of this crime map that they had and wasting hours out of my day. So I went to Freeside and uh, Nathan said, okay, let's sit down and look at it. And like two minutes later, he said, oh. Well, you can just go here where it says crime data downloads. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that is how we get this stuff here, which you might notice looks oddly like a spreadsheet. <laughs> so what you're looking at here, this is just a small snippet of stuff, but uh, our system right now has every crime uh, record from the year 2009 to today. Um, so we're looking at a total of about 232,000 data points, uh, and in addition, uh, the APD's data has a lot more useful information for us. Um, let me see if I can see. So you see uh, in the top, the top section here, there's a section that says occur time. 
So the old map that I was copying everything out of told you what shift crime occurred in. So if an officer was working at the evening shift, it would just say, happened in the evening. Um, so I didn't really know what time the actual crime would have been occurring at that point. I just knew it's sometime late. I might run into it then. Uh, whereas this gives us exact times. It's 1708 is the exact time that a victim reported that this thing occurred. Um, so we can get a much more uh, much more precise uh, feel for what, what crime is actually happening on an hour by hour basis. So that's report time, right? That is, that is the, no, so, okay, where is? So report time. Report time is over towards the left, or yeah, towards the left there, it says RPT, uh, date, and somewhere report time is in here, I think. Well, possible time. Possible, possible time, possible time. Uh, whereas occur time is like, if you got robbed and I showed up, and I said, what happened? And you said, well, it's 1708, I got robbed. You would say 1708, because you're, you're like computers, and that's how computer people talk. Um, but so that is, that, is the actual, that is the actual time that the victim says it happened. Um, so it may or may not be 100% accurate, just because people aren't great at like remembering that things happened like eight minutes after the turn of the hour. Um, but it gives us a much better idea than just knowing that, well, it happened at night. Um, so it also gives us uh, some other some other good info over here on the right hand side we have a section called beat uh, beat makes it really easy to parse through because I know that Castleberry Hill where I patrol is beat 502 beat is basically just like the area where a particular officer patrols uh, and so we can go through we can download all the data from Atlanta and if I just want to look at Castleberry Hill I can just say only give me the stuff from 502 or if I want to take this anywhere else in the city I can just say okay give me you know Give me the data for 204, and I can see all the crimes that happened in that neighborhood instead. Um, and oh, and it also gives us nice mapping points. Uh, nice, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Coordinates. 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 Uh, so we can very, very easily just say this is where crime happened. Now the coordinates themselves are actually the location of the police officer's car when he submits the report. Um, and in theory, because it doesn't always happen this way, in theory that should be the place where the crime occurred. Um, officers are not supposed to leave the scene until they have submitted their report, uh, but sometimes they don't. Uh, and so sometimes you'll get weird outliers that'll say it's from Castleberry Hill, and then you'll look at it later and you'll go, oh no, this is at the precinct like five blocks away where you got, you decided to go home and just do all your paperwork at the end of the night. Um, but so that is what I got to before I went, okay, now what the hell am I supposed to do? Uh, and so Nathan, this is Nathan. Nathan, come talk. Come talk, Nathan. Nathan did this stuff. All right, so um, you get a CSV file from the, um, from the police, and uh, it's pretty easy to go through and, with the command line, do some, do some, am I loud enough, or do I need the microphone? It's recording you on the microphone. OK, I will talk into the microphone. All right, so you can go through and do some simple command line stuff on some CSVs like this. Okay, right there. There you go. Right there. Uh, your mouth. <laughs> yeah. You can go through and do some simple command line stuff on some CSVs to um, cut out whatever whatever columns you want in the in the database, and also you can do a grep on it to just search for um, your your beat five oh seven um, for just the neighborhood that you want. Um, we're we almost have a version that has all of the crime in Atlanta, but uh, um, we're, right now the, the stuff we'll show you right now is just the, the beat that, um, that Crimson patrols. So five sector seven, by the way. All right, so um, what we, we're cheap, and this is not a real application, so um, we use a lot of free tools and stuff like that. So. Um, Firebase is a great way of not having to write a backend for anything. So, um, uh, okay, yeah, uh, I would like to show um, Firebase. But anyway, um, so Firebase gives you a lot of power for a small site, and it's free for anything that's not a giant website. And um, you have a little bit of querying ability like SQL, and um, but what it's really, really amazing at is real-time updates. So if you want to make a chat app, um, it's really easy to just subscribe to a, 
a single spot and um, uh, and it'll just automatically have a chat app. So if you add new nodes into a stuff in, into a, a node, um, uh, but I'll I'll show you that in a second. Um, so I need to log into my um, Mac. Right here. I don't know how to Mac. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I need a, an incognito window so I have to log into Firebase. Sure, got it. Don't look at his password. <laughs> you can use a packet sniffer to get his password right now. If you're into that. That guy's already doing it. Except I have an HTTPS, so hopefully. I'll yes. just tell you what he's typing. What's your what certificate? <laughs> <laughs> also, I have a keylogger installed. <laughs> Weak password. And we know the number of characters he's using. I thought that was the video if I remember the right password. Uh, Add one to the no hack survive <laughs> user error. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> it's the same password. That's <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> This is the part of the presentation we hey, call shit show part. Let's do a round of applause for two factor authentication. <laughs> do, you, do we need to see this? Okay. <laughs> Oh, all right. So how about how about two seven one five one five? Anybody logging into my account right now? Quick, in the next six seconds. Okay, I I get. I, I'll take this part, Nathan. Just take it take it easy for a second. Okay, good. Right. So, yeah, let's give it one more second. I'll get. Let me get you there. Well, I want to show I go on to. I know, I know this is a big scary world. <laughs> no, no, this is the wrong one. This this has all of it. Is that a problem? You're just showing it. It's okay. going to be a big database. Yeah, uh, this this is this is the wrong. It's it will take forever. It has. Okay. Uh, okay, we got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, so this is what we're using as a backend. So basically, you, it's really easy to send data up here, and each of these points is just a crime that happened in Atlanta. So. We can just store rows of information in here. You can make it a lot nicer and have more structured data. This is sort of like a Mongo sort of database where you have a key value pair and it's sort of just a JSON tree. And um, Firebase is really nice because I can come in here and change a number and if I, whoops, a little closer to the microphone. If I, if I change this number right here, and somebody has a map open, um, that point in the map will change. As you know, if somebody has a, a map open, uh, it's not super useful for this this app, but it's very cool for lots of other apps. Um, this is another example of uh, other stuff that uh, Haikulon can do um, with sort of a structured, um, uh, uh, sort of a structured database. They manage all the passwords and stuff like that. And these are, this is an app where people, it's sort of Twitter, but people write haikus and it forces you to write a haiku. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, anyway, so um, you can have more structured data and do some other cooler, cooler stuff with this. Um, but anyway, all right, so I guess uh, I'll talk, yeah, I guess that's what I wanted to show. Um, All right, so I guess um, that's the back end, and then I'm not a front end person, so I'll let Jonathan talk a little bit about the front end, and uh, then we'll go into code, or should I just, uh, what do you think? should I show the code example for the Firebase? I think, I think that, we'll I think it, let's just, let's look at the app. We'll see it. Okay, everybody, uh, so Polymer is a thing. Uh, is anybody familiar with web components? Y'all into that? Okay, anybody write any kind of HTML or any kind of front-end code, JavaScript, or anything like that? Wow, okay, all right, so uh, so there's this problem, and it's called HTML, <laughs> and uh, Polymer is trying to solve that problem. Uh, so basically, it's what really gets frustrating when you're writing uh, HTML is that you have to rewrite a lot of code, and if you're familiar with clean coding practices, uh, you're probably familiar with the principle, don't repeat yourself. 
And a big part of that is trying to modularize your code and having things that are reusable. That's sort of the nirvana of programming is that you just write something. Like, you don't even have to write it anymore. It's just kind of automatic. So, let's check here. Yeah, so uh, the thing about Polymer is that it is a library that's trying to um, try to find a way where we can make semantic sort of tags. Uh, so I can show an example, Polymer, let's see. Or everything can crash. All right, let's not do that. That's that's normal, right? Okay. Yeah. Did you push buttons? No. Why don't you exit out of full screen? See It'll be fine. So right now what I'm opening up is just to uh, give you a couple of examples of uh, what the tags look like. So other project. So let's see, this is a Crimson Fist little thing here. So you're normally, maybe if you've seen HTML before, you're probably used to seeing something like this, where you see, can y'all read, can y'all see this at all? Y'all read this, it's hard to read? No, no, it's not. Not fast, but it's readable. Okay, so. So for example, I have, uh, normally you'd have divs and stuff like that, uh, and that's not very semantic. It's, when, I mean, when I say semantic, I mean something that's easy for a human user to read and understand, something that'll, that'll be clean when you go through it. So we have these custom elements, like a paper drawer panel, for example, uh, that creates a drawer panel on the left-hand side. So basically, uh, I have a, a import folder, or import file, it's called uh, elements.html, and then I use Bower to manage all of these uh, in little uh, little pages, and each one of these is totally encapsulated. So I can just take these things that have been written once, and I can put them on this page, and then it all makes sense. So this is a really easy, fast way to write this stuff. Weird that this works, right? Okay, so I can, I want to show the app. I want to show, because we're just talking about this, and I want you guys to be able to visualize this. I, I have it up already. There we go. Okay, so we're still working on this. So, for example, uh, if you have anybody use uh, the new Android stuff, uh, like anything past Android L, anybody? Android users? Okay, cool. So, the styled guy and everything that they use for the new Android stuff, that all uses material design, which is Polymer. So, you cool little things like uh, this app, the thing, the big drawback to this app, in my opinion, is that you have a list of all of these like heinous crimes, and it's like, oh, well, do I want a little burglary today? Check. How was a homicide? Check. Larceny? Check. Uh, we'll skip that and we'll go to robbery. So, so yeah. So this is this is kind of what the app looks like. We're still in progress here, so I'm gonna work on these drop downs. But yeah, this is like what Crimson uh, was talking about earlier. So say that we want to see what kind of crimes uh, occurred on Friday at 3 p.m. We could see, if we're gonna look for, let's say we're gonna look for who steals cars when school gets out. We could do that. We say, oh, right here. So uh, this has got one point, so this is in zone 507. This isn't all of the Atlanta crime data. Unfortunately, we have more than one auto theft in our history. Um, so what we can do is we can zoom in on this one place that's in zone five, sector seven, which is what we have selected right now. And then it'll show us with the, this little heat map right here where the crime occurred. So we can also have a, a wider spread if you know we ignore the day or the hour. We can see where all of these uh, thefts occurred. Um, so yeah, this is a, meant to be a statistical tool. So we're not trying to see uh, exactly a list of all the crimes. We don't want a litany of everything that's happened. We just want to see what kind of crimes happen in one place. So that is the front end. This is so it's Polymer. So it's a uh, this is called a drawer panel on this left side. Um, with a little bit more uh, fiddling, you can make it so there'll be a little hamburger button over here. I haven't done that yet. Uh, so you can have a pop out. So if you put this to a mobile view, then it'll automatically s switch over. So it's already responsive. Uh, let's see. Anything else you want to say about this? Yeah, that's good. Let me go back to that presentation. That's Palmer. It's pretty neat. It's uh, it's a library. If you want to make good front end stuff and you hate writing code, Palmer is what you want. All right. So actually, actually, 
Actually, I'd like you to show the Google Maps API code. Use the microphone. Sure. Um, so yeah, so the other thing that we ended up using is obviously Google Maps is Google Maps is a pretty good. Um, I don't know, most people use Google Maps for doing mapping applications like this, but um, their one of their newest versions of um, their mapping API has a lot of really cool stuff in it, like this heat map. So um, in here, we loaded up a ton of points. We just loaded up a ton of points and said, build a heat map off of this, and then threw it on the map. So it's uh, relatively easy to do, and um, we can uh, show that in a second, I think, yeah. So uh, we'll go ahead and show a little bit of the, the uh, Firebase and Google Maps API. Sure. All right, so you want to see uh, which one you want to see? You want to see like CSV from what we have from this? Well, just go to the JavaScript. OK. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is gross. Right. Oh, you know what? I'm going to listen. Oh, it's not in full screen anymore. All right, sure. Cool. This is this, this is your stuff from Redditor. Okay. Wait. So, the current? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um. All right. So I'll go over this pretty fast. So, oh, you can't yeah, see yeah. anything if I highlight something. Just click this. Um, yeah. So yeah, you you can make a, a Google map with one line okay. in JavaScript. It's pretty sim simple. You can set some map options for like what type of what type of map you want and how zoomed in you want it and things like that. And um, yeah. So um, Firebase, uh, you create this this um, you create a new Firebase object. So Firebase is a really great uh, JavaScript mm -hmm. API. Let's see. Can you zoom like make it bigger a little bit? Can you just control plus or something? No, not easily. No. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. View at the top. I'm listening. Set it to old person mode. <laughs> yeah. It's a Mac, so that's on by default. Ooh. Ooh. It doesn't work. You're not allowed to push stuff on here anymore. <laughs> Your privilege is in your What do you want to tell them? Well, anyway, I'll, I'll just, I'll just go. I just want I, we, only have, we only have a few minutes left. So uh, basically, you can, it's really, it's really declarative. You can come in and say, hey, I want a new Firebase reference. So the way that any Firebase starts is uh, that you have a new reference, and it uh, just points to whatever your URL is. That's the cool thing that Nathan was saying earlier about Firebase, is that every place in your data, uh, every value that you have in your table, uh, has a unique URL, and so you can do all sorts of neat stuff with it. So you can say grab, down here we grab our, our elements by ID, that's pretty standard JavaScript stuff, uh, and then you can set you know whatever your current time is. Uh, let's see, down here you make your DOM listener with your, uh, your map, so that's looking for your changes, and then you have your filters down here, and that's where you put in your stuff, but yeah. I think we need, we need to start wrapping it up, because we're gonna need questions. So let's uh, just move on. Okay. We have a few slides left. Well, I have the whole Android app. Oh yeah, he has the whole Android app, so uh, okay. one second. Let's see. We're all driving the car at the same time. It's normal. Yeah, you drive two frames in. So yeah, this is the cool thing, the API, Google Maps API, basically we just can drop in all those coordinates from that nice CSV, and then we can make a heat map pretty easily. So. This is not a good picture of Android, but um, this is a little bit better. Um, so we, it's pretty easy to mirror what we did on, um, pretty pretty easy to mirror what we did on, on the web with um, with Java on Android. So this is the same the same app using the same Firebase data on on Android and a little bit zoomed in and. Uh, this is online for anybody to download and stuff, and we'll uh, we have the code on GitHub. Um, so, in fact, um, uh, the the version one of the website is on codeless.ninja. If you want to check it out, it's on <coughs> crimsonfist.net. Crimsonfist.net. Yes. Um, 
But anyway, so I'll just point at the only one interesting file in this whole thing. Um, so um, this is basically replicating a lot of the same stuff that uh, we were doing before. You have almost one line to, to pull out whatever data you want from Firebase, and then you add a, an event listener to just say, um, anytime the value changes in the whole database, um, pull the data down, and um, you, you can say only do it once if you want, but, um, and then it go, it'll go through and uh, pull all of the, um, the data out of, um, uh, our data snapshot that we get. So it's basically a big JSON tree, and you can pull out each of the, the individual pieces of data and then create a little structure that we can plot on the map. Um, and then uh, down here, um, let's see, we have a Google map up here, just the same as um, uh, before, and um, it will, after it loads, it will come down and um, uh, finish on that ready, and uh, it's also just basically three lines of code to uh, make a heat map out of all of, out of a list of crime locations. So whenever we want to change the list of crime locations, we just um, um, clear the crime locations and filter it, and then um, rebuild the heat map. So it's really easy to, um, to do everything, but yeah. Um, so check out our sometime later. Yeah, so we're not telling you to go be amateur superheroes, but I think that there was a list of instructions on what to do to be a, a, a amateur superhero, and I believe that if you live in the Atlanta area, you have this significant data set to work with. So I didn't say anything, but you should go to crimsonfist.net, and that's all. So, um, where's, where's the map? On the map. Where's the map? Website? Yeah. Cool. I can't see anything on your screen. Yeah, I don't know what's like that. Cool. So, um, let's go for it. Thanks, I'm not going to push any buttons. So, the cool thing, uh, this is an awesome tool for me to use. Um, but a big reason why I wanted to do this in the first place and why I'm super glad I ended up getting with these guys who uh, could make it work really well and polish it up and make it pretty uh, is because outside of people like me that do this you know, on their own, um, Predpol has a great product uh, that is available to most places. Most police departments in big cities and things like that can get Predpol. Uh, but it's very expensive, like I said, in places, smaller towns uh, or communities that have neighborhood watch groups, things like that, can't access it, you know? Uh, so I wanted, my, my goal with this project, and, and I really do feel like we're at a point where we're getting damn close to having this available, is to basically have something that anyone can take. As long as you have the data, all this stuff is there. You just put the data in and it does it for you. Um, and so... Like, that is, that is the amazing thing about this map. Like I said, we, we put it all out, it's free, take it, do cool stuff with it. Source. It's open source. Apache license. Apache license to whatever he said, it's fine. Just, just use it, yeah. it's fine. Um, but yeah, use it, do cool stuff with it. Uh, if you do cool stuff with it, tell us about it. Send it to us so we can, uh, we can make cooler things happen with it. Um, anything else, gentlemen? Yeah, it's it's under Apache license too. So if you want to do any kind of open source projects with it, then go nuts. Just give us some attribution. That's cool. Now, does anyone have questions? One person has questions. Um, so how do you sync the database between the APD data, or do you have to like manually download it? 
Okay, so it's just a script that you go to the website and it downloads uh, the CSV file. So that's, that's the way that we're doing it right now. If we can come up with a more streamlined way, then we would do that. Uh, in the black shirt and then blue shirt. Yeah, I just wanted to know what you've done with this app. Like, has it actually helped you not wander around aimlessly? Um, <laughs> yes, very much so. Uh, so when I first started, um, I'm going to try and give a, a, a rough time frame to give you an idea. Like, let's say I patrolled, I used to patrol three nights a week for about eight hours a night. Uh, and in a year, I would run into maybe five to six crimes in progress. A lot of crimes after the fact, you know, running up on, a, you know, walking up on a lot of cars with windows broken out. Um, but very rarely was it that I would come across something where I could actually do anything about it proactively. Uh, since starting the crime, uh, the original mapping project and then doing this, um, I'd say I'm running into, on a, every month, about two to three when I'm out. Uh, so it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's, it's definitely a significant increase. Um, and I've noticed that the more we tweak the system, uh, the more accurate it seems to get for me as far as uh, actually finding things. Uh, yeah, and another potential application for this, obviously, if you are not a masked hero that has like tons of like martial arts training and like de a decade of experience, this might be something that you can look at to say, hey, I'm going to be at this neighborhood in this time. If you're worried that you know a place might be unsafe, this is something that you could use to see like, okay, what do I really need to be worried about? So this could be something that you could use really to protect yourself proactively, that if you want, if there's certain areas that you want to avoid, or if, you know, let's say that you see that there's a certain street that cars always get broken into at between three and five. Because unfortunately, there's a spike in crime for like, very, like petty crimes like, uh, you know, robbery and stuff like that uh, during school season. And it's, you know, and it's really concentrated. Like people get out, unfortunately, people get out of school and then they go and they do something. So you can see, okay, well, I'm in this area during these hours of between three and five. You know, this is, if I park my car, you know, a block over this way, my chances of getting my car broken into could dramatically decrease. So you could use this to protect yourself, too. What's the order? Crimson Fist, that net. Blue shirt? Crimson Fist, that oh. I was just curious if, uh, if, if any of this data is filtering back to the PD for, uh, for pre-deployment. Pre uh, um, they, so ADP, the, the Atlanta Police Department, ADP, APD, uh, they have credible. They lucked out in that they can afford their their system that already works. Uh, so uh, I have talked to a few of the uh, the, uh, the commanders and the uh, zone chiefs there, um, and thus far I, I want to take this to them now because I've gone to them in the past and they said, "Well, that's nice, but we already have that." I want to go. I want to be able to go to them and say, "Yeah, but why are you paying for it?" You know, so guys, you guys can have all this for free, and you can take that eighty thousand dollars a year that you spend to license this other piece of software and like fix something. Yeah. Um, so, as of as of right now, from this project, they haven't really had a lot of data come back to them. Uh, but hopefully, in the near future, that will change. Do you know where they get their numbers? Is that part of Credpol? Actually. Where they get their numbers? The CSV file that you download. How's it oh, going? well, that's that's actually that's where Predpol gets it, or where the police get it. I don't know where they get it. The police get it. The police get it because it's their data. Um, it, it's all generated from crime reports. Okay. So basically, as soon as a as soon as a, an officer inputs something into the computer in his car, uh, it takes it and it uploads it. Uh, well, it, it, I think it's like about a week downtime uh, for it to go public. Uh, on the, their website, but it instantly uploads it onto their database. So Predpol can instantly pull the data as soon as the officer uploads it from their car. Yeah. yeah, most of the time that you see a police officer stop on the side of the road, they're not doing anything spooky, they're just doing paperwork. Anyone? No one? Any final questions? We got one more. You got one more. You said that you have the event listener for um, Firebase. You download the whole data set every time, or is it just a delta on the JSON file? Because uh, I figured that would get really bandwidth intensive if you're downloading the whole database before. Yes, there is. The, uh, the next version of this is um, they have a query. I don't know. They have, they, have a, they have a better query system. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, 
I'll use the next time. But yes, I think this, this one is bad with intent. Yes, this is bad with intent. This is just a quick and dirty, so we give a presentation on it. But so also, we don't expect the, the data to change any after you reload. We change it once every week or so or something like that. So, so yeah. Everybody? Nobody else? All right, go find awesome. Brian. Guys,